Screw you guys. I'm going home. Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube series on how to create a PC gaming console for the living room. In the last episode, we covered Steam family sharing and how to allow multiple users in the family to play games at the same time. This time we're going to focus on a front end called Launchbox. This episode is for people who don't mind paying the $20 license fee to use the big box feature in Launchbox. As far as I know, there isn't a demo or any kind of time trial for, for big box. So that means that you can't even try it out, you know, to see if you want it or not. You either buy it or you don't. That might be a tough pill to swallow for a lot of you out there. So do remember that you don't actually need the big box uh, application. You can absolutely use Steam Big Picture Mode as your gaming front end. So take a look for some of my earlier videos in this particular series to see exactly how you set up Steam to use the Big Picture Mode and for the Big Picture Mode to act as the front end for all your gaming needs in the living room. Okay, so one of the biggest selling points for me for Big Box is the ability to batch import emulator ROMs. If you have a lot of ROMs and you're trying to do this in Steam Big Picture Mode, then prepare to spend an enormous amount of time setting up each and every game one at a time, figuring out all the command line switches you need and all the settings and targets and all that stuff in Steam. And God forbid you have some kind of hard drive crash and then you end up having to do all that work again, maybe multiple times. So that, that's a big selling point for me. So I'm assuming that if you want to play emulators though, and ROMs in emulators that you've already downloaded and configured your emulators so that they're working properly on your system. Setting up emulators and all of that is outside the scope of this specific video. So let me just tell you about a resource that you can take a look at if you are new to emulators or you want to know how to set up some of the newer emulators that are out there today. Um, over there in YouTube, there's a channel from a person that channel is called Simply Austin. Uh, if you go along to his playlist section, he's got a playlist here for emulator complete guides. It's a really fantastic series of videos that will walk you through the newer emulators for like PSP and Nintendo Wii and GameCube and PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 and all that stuff. So highly recommend that if you're new to messing around with emulators. Uh, if you are, then, then, you know, work out getting those emulators set up and running. And once you've got them set up and running and they're working properly, then come back here to my guide and pick up where you left off with the building out of the front end stuff. Okay, so in order to use LaunchBox, you've got to get the installer, of course. Um, this site you see here is uh, where you get the LaunchBox installer. Unfortunately, you can't download it directly. You've got to go to the site, provide an email address, click a button, then a little while later, they'll email you a link and then you use the link to download the installer. So we've already done that now. Um, here, what you see on the screen in the top pane, you see the launch box that I've just installed from that URL that I received. So it's completely empty. It's blank. It's the way it's going to look for you. And then down below is the launch box installation that I have that I've been using for the last several months that is fully configured to my liking. That's the configuration that you've seen in all the previous videos. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and run LaunchBox for the very first time or, or simulate running it for the first time. You can dismiss this dialog that tells you features of the build that you're using. Um, immediately you see a, a importation wizard that you can use to import games. I typically would just dismiss that. Uh, the first thing I do, of course, the uh, background in the application is using your wallpaper. I find that to be really distracting. So the first thing I do here is go to options and then go to images and then go to default background and change it so that it doesn't use my wallpaper. Click OK. It should reload into a more easier on the eye sort of interface. OK, so we've done that. First thing we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to import some games. In this case, I'm going to import some ROMs. So I'm going to go import and I'm going to select ROM files. Okay, and the wizard's going to pop up. We're going to go next, add folder, and then we're going to go ahead and navigate down to where we've got the games we want to add. In this case, I've got every platform neatly separated. I'll click Nintendo GameCube, click OK. Okay, the next stage in the wizard is going to ask you for what's the system 
for the files that you're bringing in. So we're going to go find Nintendo GameCube. Next. Now it asks us to pick an emulator. We don't have any set up yet, so we'll click Add. And we see that LaunchBox has conveniently detected that we're adding GameCube games, so we should be using Dolphin. So it's recommending Dolphin, which is in fact the emulator we're using for this. So all we need to do is tell it where Dolphin is installed. So I'll navigate here to Dolphin. And we'll notice that it already knows the command lines that we need. So if you remember from the earlier videos where we were trying to, you know, configure the GameCube game to kick off out of Steam Big Picture, you know, all that work we had to do to get the targets right. Well, in this case, it already knows everything we need to to know to get this stuff working. So we just click OK. We'll click Next. Now it's going to ask you if you want to move your games from wherever they are into the LaunchBox directory. I always don't do that. I always just use the, you know, leave the files where they currently are. And then here we want to check both the LaunchBox Games database and Wikipedia. So we're going to click Next. And then we're going to let it try to download all the artwork that it can. EMU Movies is some service you can purchase that is going to give you video snaps and things like that. I'm not really interested in paying any money for something like that, so I just ignore that. Click Next. And then I'm not concerned about pulling down game manuals, but I do want the searches to search against the folder names instead of the ROM names. So we'll click next. And at the final step in the wizard here, it's going to show us, hey, it pulled the folder names and this is what it's going to search by. So take a quick look. If any of these are wrong, you can go ahead and just click in, click in one of these cells and change the value of whatever you wanted to, to search. Um, so we can go ahead and click finish and it will start the importation process. This will probably take a little bit. But uh, we'll let this go ahead and run. All right, so we, we're back now and we see that uh, we imported 19 uh, games in there successfully. OK, so the next thing we're going to, want to do here is just, uh, you know, take a look at one of these games and make sure the game runs correctly. So we're just going to right click and select play. And the game should load up like normal. All right, good news. OK, so everything's looking good there. So we're going to exit out of this. OK, now you might be tempted at this point to kick off Big Box to see, you know, what it looks like in your full screen interface. Up here in the upper right hand corner, you see Big Box mode, just kind of like how Steam has got the big picture mode icon. Click that and here you see the nice dialogue indicating that uh, you know that's only available in the premium version and you're not a premium user so you can't do that so I'm going to click no on that but we will click details uh, which is really handy because we can take a good look at the fan art and all the metadata that was extracted and all that kind of good stuff so it looks like we're good to go on the GameCube games so the next thing that we want to do is you know let's add some Steam games in there so you might want to be, or you'd be tempted really to look at uh, tools, import, and you see Steam games. Now, you know, let me recommend against doing that. So at least if you have a large library. So in my particular case, I've got something like 200 games. And of those 200 games, I think I've got like 15, maybe 18 games actually installed. So uh, if I do this and I link my Steam account to LaunchBox, it's going to pull all 200 games into the system, which is not what I want. Um, that would create a situation where, you know, downstairs in the full screen interface, you're having to cycle through 200 and something games and almost none of those games are going to work when you click on it. Um, they'll show up, but when you go to play them, they're going to kick off the download screen. Steam's going to spend several hours downloading the games. And then once that's done, it's going to have to, you know, do the install. Then once the install is done, whatever patches are needed. And then once that's done, you're going to have to go into the options and configure the resolution and all the graphical settings. You don't want to do any of that stuff, right? I mean, your system in the living room should be all completely set up. You sit down, you get the controller, you pick the game you want, click a button and a game is playing. End of story. So I'd recommend against using the wizard for this. What I typically do here is I just go to game add. Okay. And you'll get this little dialogue. Now I go back to Steam and I find uh, you would do this for all the games you currently have installed. So I'd go ahead and filter it and you're probably looking at all your games. Filter your games in Steam down to installed. 
and then go down to the game you want to install into this system. I right click, select create desktop shortcut. Okay. Then I go back to the desktop and right click on the shortcut and select properties. Okay. And then you just copy this URL out of the shortcut and paste this down in application path. Now, the reason why you're doing this instead of browsing and just going to find the exe is, you know, this is going to wire it into Steam correctly with all the support for all the Steam features, like the screenshots and the capture and the friends list and the achievements and the overlay and all that kind of stuff. Um, so th that's, you want to use this whenever you can. So then up in title, we're going to type the name of the game that we're wanting to add, Saints Row 4 and we'll click search for metadata. Okay, and we're gonna pick the Windows edition and check the values and make sure they're okay. Then we're gonna click download images media, download and click okay. And then go down to our new Windows category and we see we've got our game there. So let's right click on the game, select play, make sure it's playing. And it comes right up, so it looks like we're good to go in that regard. Okay, what about non-Steam games? You play games, Origin games, GOG games, that stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So you'll remember in one of the previous videos, we added Far Cry 4 into the system, into Steam as a non-Steam game. Uh, it's, it was not purchased from Steam. I purchased this from Uplay, so it's not part of Steam, even though it looks and acts like it. So what we're going to do is, once we've added that non-Steam game, we're going to right-click and select create desktop shortcut, just like we did for the other game. And if we go back to our desktop, we see now we have this Far Cry 4 shortcut, even though it's not a Steam game. We're going to right click, select properties, copy that Steam URL, and then go to game, add, and we're going to paste in that Steam URL. We're going to type in Far Cry 4, click enter or search, select the Windows version, download images, download, and then click OK. And now we see our game is here. We're going to right click, select play, make sure the game kicks off correctly. Now, again, this is a Uplay game, but this is going to be launched in such a way as to where we get the Steam overlay and all the Steam features. So let's give this a second run here to make sure that it's loading properly. And everything is looking good. All right, so that is working just fine. Okay, so now uh, one other thing that we want to kind of talk about here is with the emulator stuff, uh, when you kick off a game, you know, you want to be able to close, get out of that game and get back into Big Box or Cody. So normally emulators require you to hit the escape key on the keyboard to close the game. Uh, and obviously that's not really going to be an option for us if we're sitting on the couch with nothing but a controller. So we're going to go ahead and go to tools, options, and then we're going to go down to input gamepad joystick. And we're going to click enable joy, uh, joypad input, and we're going to select the controller that we want to use. In this case, we want Xbox 360. Then we're going to go down to automation. Uh, the bad news is you see this grayed out and you see here it says these options are only available in the previous version or not the previous, but the premium version. So if this were a premium version, you would check that box and then you basically click this button. It says button seven and you'd hit the select button on your on your uh, controller and then you click the button eight and click the start button on your controller and then click OK. And what that would do is whenever you're inside one of these emulated games and you're done playing, you just hold the select key or not key, the select button and then the, hit the start button. So select plus start on the controller and that will close the game for you. So you don't have to go to a keyboard or plug in a keyboard or anything like that to get out of the game. So nice handy feature there. Okay, so we're kind of stuck at this point without the premium version you know this is you know basically essentially all you've got here with the freebie edition so we're going to go ahead and close this version and then i'm going to go to my premium version and i'm going to copy the license file from the old version to the new version now when i run the launch box 
we should be able to kick off big box without much of a trouble. So um, also we should be able to go down here, tools, options, and then we're going to go down to input automation. Uh, now we can do it. So we check it. We're going to click that select button, start button, click OK. All right. So now we can close our emulated games just by hitting select and start. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we got in Big Box. So we're going to click Big Box. And here we go. So we have two platforms. We've got the Windows and we've got the GameCube. By default, when you kick off this Big Box, the, uh, the controllers don't work. So you've got to actually hit Select and then go to Options. And then you got to go down to controller and then you got to click enable controllers and then device. You've got to click enter until you find the device you want. That's the device we want. All right. Now our controller is working and we could use the Xbox controller. So here we should be able to just, you know, uh, mess around here. Now you'll notice uh, there's no videos here. All we've got are these, you know, some of these have screenshots. Some of these don't have screenshots. The look is kind of hideous with its default view and everything like that. Um, so we want to get all this stuff cleaned up. The sounds aren't very good, right? I mean, they sound like tin cans. So um, we're going to do a lot of customization here moving forward. But for now, we're going to click uh, escape and exit and close big box. Uh, for now, we're going to go to end this here. And then next video, we're going to focus on Big Box itself and how to do all those customizations to get that running, you know, perfectly to where it looks nice and clean. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.